And now I got my scale out, my bathroom scale will we'll weigh the crank. No cheating, but everybody in the comments, what do you think the crank weighs? Remember, this is not just your normal 6.7 crank. It has this extra thing in the back because it's industrial. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel, back to the garage. Ugh. Sorry if that was a little loud. I did have my hearing protection on for once. Um, well, my hearing protection and my eye protection. Um, so guys, welcome back to the channel. If you got watched the last video, we were disassembling this industrial 6.7 Cummins block. So our one bolt rounded off on this bearing cap, I guess that is number one. Is that number one? Yeah, that's the rear of the motor. So on the number one bearing cap for the piston. So, so I guess that'd be number one rod bearing. So number one rod bearing, the, where did I put the bolt? Here it is. So as you can see, I don't have a welder currently at the house accessible. So I decided to cut it with the grinder. I did try and get it off with a pipe wrench and using a chisel. So I ground down the head, cut it off, and then started cutting into it. That relieved enough pressure I could hit it with the chisel and actually spin it out. So just a little uh, tech tip, I guess you'd say, for anybody who hasn't had to do that on something before it does work on occasion, you know, just relieve a little bit of the uh, strain and you can hit it out, hit it around. So we're gonna finish pulling this out. We're gonna pull the crank out now. Um, a couple of the pistons did drop down overnight or when I was messing with it. I'm not sure which because I was kind of banging around. But we'll pull the crank out and uh, see what this block has. Yeah. So we'll pull the crank out and see what this block has to offer. So we still have number one and number six pistons inside of the engine block. I did get the crank out and I will say this thing is fucking massive. Uh, it is heavy as shit. I'd have to say it's got to be over 100 pounds. Um, you know what? I got an idea. Now I got my scale out. My bathroom scale will we'll weigh the crank. No cheating, but everybody in the comments, what do you think the crank weighs? Remember, this is not just your normal 6.7 crank. It has this extra thing in the back because it's industrial. 
I don't know if a normal one has that in the front. But anyway, um, I'm going to grab it real quick. Oh, shit. I'm going to say 120 pounds. Um, yeah, it's definitely over 100. Got to be. Grab it. Get the scale started. Get the scale started. All right, scale started. I wasn't too far off, 125.2. Holy shit. That is a lot of fucking swinging mass. God damn. That is one heavy piece of uh, rotating equipment right there. 125 pounds, this weighs, I think the entire engine block with the head, all assembled, I think weighs around 900, they say. Um, the scale's only good to 400, so it's not like I can weigh the block. I don't wanna destroy my scale, not that it gets used very often anyway, so. All right, the last two pistons are out, one and six. I just picked up either end with the engine hoist, hit them out, moved the block out of the way, pulled it out. So as you can see, I have just shit all over the place on the floor from this thing. I gotta clean this mess up a little bit. guys so i got all our parts kind of over on this side of the garage till i can figure out what i'm going to do with them i have no idea if there's any interest for anybody for industrial cummins parts i honestly don't know it's probably scrap metal or lawn lawn art at this point but i did put the main bearing caps back in just so we didn't lose the orientation yes they are numbered but that way we didn't have to worry about having it the other way and trying to put the bearing caps on because if there's anything that will might be might be reused to be the main bearing cap so i put all those back in our blocks pretty much disassembled just a few little odds and ends on there but oh well so we got our egr bracket slash coolant thing i i honestly don't know uh harmonic balancer i believe this is a fluid balancer just like on all the pickup trucks you know, it doesn't have a rubber grommet like on the older 5.9 stuff. We have our one adapter plate that goes on our engine rear adapter plate with integrated rear main seal. I honestly don't know what to call some of this stuff. So going with that, we have our flywheel. Um, actually, we'll stay with the back of the engine. This is the cam gear, which would be on the front of the engine if it was one of our pickup trucks and would go onto our cam like we have right here. And then this we'll call our front main seal housing. Um, really, this just holds the seal for the front of the crank and our oil pump on this particular engine. I'll try and remember to put a picture up of what the front cover for a 6.7 truck normally looks like. We have our oil cooler assembly, our CP3 pump, which is in this case mounted on this back portion and is driven off of all that stuff. Our 125 pound crankshaft. This thing's just massive. Uh, if you don't need a crank, you could always use it to lift weights. 
our oil pan, our girdle, and a water pump. Can't forget the water pump. Does appear to be the same as on the pickup trucks. And all our little engine interior goodies. Look at that. Isn't that like a bouquet of roses right there? So if we look at our bearings real quick, for the most part, all our rod bearings look great. Nothing wrong with them. Uh, the main bearings don't look too bad, but you can see some wear and some marks in them. I don't know if that's from me rotating it over a few times dry or what. But yeah, they got some scoring, but there's no like copper showing. So I honestly, I'm not sure, but I'd say this was not that bad of an engine before the piston burn up, which we'll look at in a second. And then this main bearing, which is also like a thrust bearing, you see there's two little, I assume they're oil grooves. I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm wrong. If you look on the other side, um, before I got it all dirty, you can see where there was like two grooves like that on this side and they're gone. So I don't know if this thing thrusted real hard and that wore or what, but it definitely has some uh, scoring on it as well. But I'd say this thing was not in that bad a shape until piston number one decided to uh, have a little meltdown here. So you see piston number one, what it looks like with that side all melted down and fucked up like. Here's what it should look like. Just nice, symmetrical, little point in the middle. You know, that's what our piston should look like. So that was the reason that this engine was at the auction. Had to be replaced because a injector, I believe, hung wide open and well, you see the result. This is our number one piston, which we had to, um, I don't know what the right word is, completely destroy the bolt to get it out. But if you see where our bearing cap is for a rod, when we put that together, you can hardly even see the mark where it goes together. That's because they do something kind of unique with these. And I guess to say unique, I'm sure a lot of manufacturers do this on stuff, but it's definitely a unique idea to me. It's not something you would normally think of. You think these would be machine surfaces. So what Cummins does, and like I said, I'm sure other manufacturers do this on stuff, they actually kind of break the rod. So you see all the ridges and, and how coarse that is. I mean, if we tried to put this on the wrong way or on a different rod, it just, it wouldn't look right at all. It would just not line up. It would look like complete garbage. But you spin it around 180 to where it's supposed to be and get everything all lined up. And look at that. It's like it never came apart. Looked like it was one 360 degree piece. So what they do is they fracture this cap on the rod. So that way, rather than having two machine surfaces to kind of grab and not move, now you probably have thousands of them with these you know, coarse sides all perfectly knitted together on either side. So they, I'm not even sure how they do it, 100 percent i'll probably have to, I'll have to look it up on the google just for my own interests but they fracture it and that way you have a much stronger bond i mean like i said just putting it together you can't even hardly see there is a fracture there which to me is is pretty fucking ingenious all right guys so that ends night two of tom's reckless dest destruction not destruction Reckless disassembly of a 6.7 Cummins engine block. Um, I know this is not a pickup truck block like Caitlin or the race truck, but it is a 6.7 Cummins nonetheless. All the rods, bearings, tappets, all that kind of stuff is pretty much the same as what's on our pickup trucks with the exception of obviously stuff on our crank, stuff on our cam, and stuff on the outside of that. But the basic interior of the block, we'll call it, is the same. So I hope you guys have a little bit better grasp. I know I certainly do. I learned some things by doing this myself. Now, that being said, I was a bit reckless taking this apart. You know, I didn't label everything and all. Well, if this thing ever gets rebuilt, obviously we're not going to, you know, if we ever build it, I should say, use this for the race truck. 
we're not going to be putting in factory rods. We're not going to be putting in just one piston to replace the burn up piston. We're going to replace all that shit. So I wasn't really worried about it. Like I said, the only thing that may be used over is the main caps because I remember talking to Drew at DNJ Precision this summer and he said, you know, they, they do make billet main caps. Does he recommend them? Sure, but are they a necessity? No. So I just kept them with it, you know, kept them in order so that way there's not a big deal there if we ever do decide to do anything. And I still don't know. I really don't. I'm very up in the air about it, but it's been sitting out in the driveway for a while now. So I figured it was time to take it apart, see what was going on, and uh, just learn a little bit. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you do, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Get out in your garage. Get the wrenching on your truck. I'll catch you guys in the next one.